Hello and welcome to a video from filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. There's a link in the description. Today we're going to be setting up Linux, in this case Debian Linux, in a virtual machine. Now you can download a regular installer in ISO just like you would for any other system. Get a virtual machine up and running and do an install. Thing is, Debian has a bunch of pre-built images for you to save you some time. If you just go to cloud.debian.org forward slash images, you can find a list of images. Uh, today we're going to go and we're going to use one. We'll just go with Bookworm, which is the most current, but you can look through these. Also in the description of the video you're currently watching, will be a link to my notes here on Pastebin. So I'm going to go through and follow these commands. So let's go ahead and just jump right into the shell. Again, I am on a Debian-based machine right now. And these are the things you'll want to install. So you'll want to sudo apt install these two packages. Uh, QMU, which is how I'm pronouncing it. People seem to have different ways of pronouncing it. But QMU is a virtual machine that gives you lots of power and options. And also, once you have it installed, uh, if you were to type in QMU system and hit tab a couple times, you'll see that it supports many different architectures. So if you want to work on an ARM system, you can do that here. If you want to work on a PowerPC system, you can. If you want to work on a MIPS system, you can. It's got all that once you have it installed. Uh, but we're just going to do regular desktop x86. So now we need to download an image. So this is the URL for the image, but you can grab the URL from the uh, site that we just looked at, but I'm putting that into a variable, and I'm just going to download that using wget. I actually, to save time, I actually already have it downloaded, So, but it's about 400 megabytes, just shy of 400 megabytes, so it shouldn't take very long to download. Now, that is a uh, QCOW, I guess how you say it, a QCOW2 um, disk image. So even though it's showing up as 400 megabytes, it's really larger than that. It will expand as you use it. But once you get it running in a virtual machine, it's, uh, I think, around four gigs in space, which is fine if you're just throwing up a server and stuff. But if you want to, in this virtual machine, set up a desktop and other applications, uh, 400, uh, or sorry, four gigabytes isn't going to be very much, or three gigabytes, whatever it ends up being, we're going to expand it. So again, we've downloaded this image, which again, if I list out, right now is just 400 megabytes but again it's two or three gigs once you get into the virtual machine we're going to use qmu image and we're going to say create another qcow image and we're basically we're going to call it debian.qcow2 and then we're going to make it 10 gigs so we're just creating we just created an empty image right so if i list out here files you can see the one we downloaded which is about 400 megabytes and then we have this one which Round it up. It's it's. We're not going to get into how numbers are divided up when it comes to file sizes, but we have 10 to 11 gigs in a file size. But it's just an empty image right now. So what we want to do now is use this vert resize command to expand the partition of SDA1 from our original small image into the new image. So we're going to run that, and we'll take a moment. And what it's going to do is it's going to look at this first image we downloaded is going to look at all its partitions. It's going to copy them into this uh, new image, but you'll see that it will resize the main uh, root directory, which is SDA1, and expand it out. And it tells you it did it, there were no errors, but check and make sure it works before you delete your original image because you don't want to lose anything. That's it. Now we can just use QMU, and again, we're running it on a desktop here, x86, that's the type of image we're having. I'm saying dash enable KMV, that's kernel virtual machine. Um, basically, it just allows uh, better access to your hardware, so you'll get better performance. And then I'm setting to use allocate four gigs of my real memory to be used in a virtual machine. So we're gonna use, our virtual machine's gonna have four gigs of RAM. Of course, you can put that number up, but just be aware, don't put it to a number higher. Then your physical RAM, and the higher you do, the more RAM your virtual machine will have access to, but it will also slow down your main system. Then we're gonna say, okay, our hard drive is gonna be this image. We run that, QMU opens, and that's it. We've got Debian up and running. There's no install process, because it's already a uh, created image. And once you get to the login prompt, uh, you can log in. The only user right now is root and there's no password. So of course you'll want to set up a password real quick by using the passwd command. And now if I exit out, I can type in root and I can type in my password and you're good to go. Now you can sudo app, well actually you don't need to sudo to your root right now, but create new uh, users, you'll apt update, 
apt upgrade, then install the packages you want. But that's it, didn't take very long. Again, all the notes are in the description of the video. Um, and you're up and running in a virtual machine. I hope you found this useful. It's a great way to test out things. Um, and Debian just makes it really easy with all those images for all the different architectures. And again, if you were to go back to here, images, clouds, you have them all listed. So you can go bookworm, bullseye, buster, SID is unstable. Uh, again, and you can go back to even previous older versions of Debian. When you click on these, you'll have a few different options. They have dates that they've built them. They also have daily and last. If you go to SID, I think the only real option is daily because that's unstable. And oh no, they do have a late, I said last, latest. So you can always grab the latest from here. That way you can have a URL that will always grab the most recent. You can see that they were built today. Someone's gonna look at this and say, hey, uh, you're recording this at the beginning of March. Why am I not seeing this for a couple of months? Patreon viewers get early access to my video. So Patreon viewers will see this early. And I just record my videos ahead of time and then schedule them to go out. If you wanna see them early, Again, become a Patreon member. Otherwise, you'll see this in a couple of months. And that's because I try to keep a couple of months ahead on my videos in case I get tied up. This is not my full-time job. I get busy sometimes. But I do thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. Again, I have a Patreon page. There's other ways to support me. If you go to the support section on my website, Patreon, PayPal, LibrePay, uh, and other than supporting me financially, which I would much appreciate, you can Support me by liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting, all that good stuff. Links in the description of the video. I hope that you have a great day.